is there a relationship between TRT and cancer? I have sent you a study and I yeah. have a link to it under this video. So what do you think about that? This is the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. And if you want to learn all about the science-based information on this topic, consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, and you'll be on your way. You know, I've, I've had to study a lot of studies. And in my postgraduate training, a lot of post, especially in my MPH, Master of Public Health Training, we had to study the study. So I looked at that study. Again, you know, I'm, I'm bothered by the fact that it just shows associations. You know, epidemiological cohort studies can simply show associations. But associations are weak. So, I mean, the, I, mean I learned a long time ago that there was a so-called yellow nail syndrome proven by association. Now, this is probably 1920s and 1930s, but men would come in to a doctor and they'd have yellow nails. I think I may discuss this already, but and the doctor would say, man, I think, I think you have, I think you have some lung disease. You may have lung cancer. Let's, let's x-ray you for lung cancer. And they found some lung cancer developing in men with yellow nail syndrome. So they said, you know, yellow nail associate cancer. Well, what caused the yellow nail syndrome? Smoking, smoking. So the yellow nails is an association found with smoking, but it's not the cause of the lung cancer. Of course. It's a, so these association studies, no. I, re, I looked at the study again. The widely online journals, not a highly reputable journal. Um, they've been busted a couple of times for embellishing their impact studies or, or their impact markers, something they use, that publishers use to, to put their journals higher in the academic field. They've shown that they've cheated those numbers a bit over the past. So it's not a highly reputable journal. Also, I researched the, the, um, the authors in that study. You know who funds those authors? Mm -hmm. Big Cancer Society. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, there's so many studies out there that say, if anything, testosterone being a strong antioxidant, mm -hmm. and since many disease processes, in particular cancer, can flourish in a highly stressful oxidative load in the body, it stands to reason that the majority of studies indicate that there's an anti cancer uh, benefit to testosterone versus one that drives test uh, cancers. So I thought it was a very methodologically unsound study. And I even looked at the limitations that were listed. You can go into the study and, and go into the limitations listed by the authors. And they even said limits of this study. The US Biobank database that they, that they looked at uh, is not representative of the general population because it suffers severely from this healthy volunteer selection body. Now that's not a strong bias, but it's a bias. And they even tell, say this does not translate to the general population. That was one of their limits of the study and they listed it. And lastly, in the abstract, it mentioned you know, 182,000 plus men and 122,000 plus women who were cancer-free at baseline. Oh, nobody is cancer-free. They may have been tumor-free or having non-detectable tumors, but we all have cancer cells. Is So no one is ever, ever cancer-free. So I had a problem with that saying they definitely were cancer-free. Well, that's false. We all have cancer cells coming us all the time maybe non-detectable as far as tumor side. So I followed a weak study funded by big cancer. And I also looked at some of the other studies that those authors had uh, were, you know, part of. And they were all in favor of uh, cancer chemotherapies. And they were all showed studies associating BHRT 
with cancer risk. Mm -hmm. Well, I think there was a reason for that. I think they're paid out by cancer, you know, some cancer society to show associative studies that'll lend people like us to think that there's a risk. No, I think the risks are heavily overplayed and that there's many, many, many more documentable, good methodological studies indicating that there ain't anti-cancer testosterone. Mm -hmm. Again, if your testosterone was associated with so many cancers, when we're young and virile, had most testosterone in us, we wouldn't, be, we're not dropping dead of cancer. So I thought yeah. it was, you know, method, methodologically unsound. And when I research it, I just poke holes in, in its uh, efficacy. Mm -hmm. right. As a dermatologist, I can concur that everyone who is 55, 60 plus has precancerous lesions on their uh, exposed skin. So that's for sure. Yeah, me too. I got I got the AKs everywhere, you know, my 56 year old skin, but I got a lot of sun exposure when I was younger and I backed off a little bit. Certainly, but not totally. I go and get my sun every day, 10 or 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Take my shirt off, get some sun in here in Florida, you know. And now give this video a thumbs up and go watch one of these videos to learn a ton more about TRT and hormone optimization. <laughs>